What up, nerds? In today's video, I'm going to show you how to secure your JSF application with Spring. The reason why I'm building this video is I wanted to make an easy example that you can get up and running in 15 minutes. Many of the videos and tutorials I've seen just haven't worked or were missing files. This tutorial will have source code at the end that will work. Once again, this is an easy example. This is not meant to be the way that you secure your banking software. It's again, a very simple version of, or implementation of Spring Security on JSF2. I'm building this in NetBeans using Glassfish. I would love to have a companion video using Tomcat and Eclipse because the whole point of this is to make it easy for people to get involved in technology. So if you guys have something like that, send it to me, I'll link it to this video. That being said, let me show you how to get the ball rolling here. We are going to click File, New Project, Java Web, Web Application. Really easy stuff. Hit the next button. Name your project. There we go. Hit the next button. We are going to enable CDI, Context and Dependency Injection. Wonderful thing. Again, hit the next button. Last but not least, Spring, JSF. That's all it takes to get the uh, application set up. The last thing you'd have to do would be hit the finish button, and that would have NetBeans build out the shell. I'm not going to do that. I already built the code for you. Now let's take a look at that code. Our web.xml. Here you see our web.xml file generated by NetBeans. The generic face, faces content is here. I modified it slightly. Once again, you'll be able to see all this. I'm going to include the source code. But let's get to the important stuff. This is what we need to put in for Spring. First thing we're doing is we're telling Spring the location of our context files. We're going to use two. We're going to put an application context and then a, a Spring security context. We're to, going to define our listener. And again, all this can be found on the Spring Source website. They will give you documentation on all the things here in case you have questions. Defining a filter chain. And then we're going to show our filter chain the pattern it's looking at. Basically, we're saying here is that our filter chain is going to look at everything from root forward. That's just basic stuff. Once again, I encourage you, if you have any questions, go to the Spring site and check out the documentation. It makes a lot of sense. Application context.xml. This is our next file. Here you have our context file that basically is going to set up the data source that we're going to use later on in our Spring Security XML file. Very important, make sure you have the correct schema. This one's overkill, but if you use a schema, it's going to work. Here we have our data source being defined. Real simple. Here's the ID. We're telling it we're using MySQL. I know this data source works. I tested it already outside of Spring. I highly recommend you guys doing the same. Last thing you want to do is have issues related to your data source not working. And as you can see here in NaviCat, if we bring it up, it's a very simple database. We have a users table. I know you guys love the the uh, Jets and Yankees as much as I do, by the way. We have a users table, and we have an authorities table. Here, we, we are going to establish our roles for the user. Really basic, really simple. Again, this is supposed to be a simple example. So that's our MySQL. I'm going to include the code you need to set up this database as well. Real easy. Again, the goal is to get you moving as fast as possible with this. So this is all we need for our application context file. All we're doing is here is describing our data source. SpringSecurity.xml. Here we have our schemas. Make sure you have the correct schemas or the page is not going to work. Next, we have an HTTP block. As you can see here, we are intercepting URLs. Anything in the protected folder, you're going to have to be of role admin to see. This should look familiar. Role admin, as you noticed, we defined in our authorities table. So this here is referring to this here. This is how we're tying in our database to Spring. Also, you're going to notice that we're telling Spring that we are supplying our own login form. Very simple. Login.xhtml is login.xhtml. It's in root, as you can see. 
If there is a authentication failure, we're sending them to lock and failed. Again, very easy. Next, we're taking care of our authentication. We're using an authentication manager. I'm using a, JDP, a JDBC user service called MySQL Data Source. This should also look familiar. This was defined in application context. Once again, I highly stress you testing out the MySQL stuff before you even build the project because you don't want to get hung up. Now, if you don't want to use a database, very simple. Get rid of this, uncomment this fold file here, like that. And now we are going to use something called a user service. Instead of using a database, I can just create a user here. Username, password, authority. There's no reason to use MySQL. I did for this example just because it seemed a little more difficult. I wanted to show you guys something cooler. But let's get back to the tutorial here. So let's put back our database authorization. And there we go. Once again, to summarize this page, we are going to be protecting everything in the protected folder. We're using MySQL as defined on the application context. And you have to be a role admin to view the pages. And you can see role admin here. Here we have login.xhtml as we've discussed in the previous section. It's a very simple login form that we're creating. All this data is going to be passed off to Spring, so we have to use field names that it's going to expect. So for our username, we're using JUsername, our password, JPassword. Really easy stuff. The finished product, again, this is a real simple form. But basically, there it is. And last but not least, on our authentication bean, we're going to call the do login method. I'm going to go over that next, but basically it's going to take J username, J password, pass it to Spring, and that's where the magic happens. Moving right along, we have our authentication bean. Our authentication bean is going to be named and request scoped. It's got two methods. First one's do login. What do login is going to do is it's going to take the context, everything we gathered on the form, and pass it to Spring. This is why we had to be very particular when naming our username, JUsername, and password, JPassword. If we don't name it this, Spring is not going to know where to find the username and password within the context. If Spring likes what it sees, it will then allow us to see the protected information. If not, it's going to dump us out on login failed. And as you remember, we defined login failed in our authentication failure part of our HTTP block. Now, once again, there are two methods, not just one. The second method is even easier than the first. It's do logout. And what that's going to do is it's going to invalidate the session and put the user on the logout page. This is really, really easy to, but we have to provide the application a way to basically kill off that session. And if someone has to leave their computer, they can then log out and not worry about someone coming in and seeing stuff they're not supposed to see. So once again, two easy methods, very simple, very fast. If by some miracle you are still awake, you have earned the right to see whether this application will actually work. Well, boys and girls, let's take her for a test drive. In this example, we are going to pretend to be a truly nefarious individual trying to find or see some content that we should not be seeing. So let's put our nefarious username in, Tom Brady, and our innocent password, Giselle. Giselle, here at Web Inspired, we do love you. Yes, I'm talking to you. Okay. Just in case you missed it. Yeah. All right. Back to the app. Logging in with credentials that are not in our database. All right. And I can assure you that Tom Brady is not in my database. So we're going to click login. And what happens is because we try to pass bad credentials, we are put our login failed page, the one we defined earlier in our security context. Now, we're going to try again. 
but we're going to log in as a truly, truly heroic individual. We'll use the name of Rex Ryan and a password of J E T S Jets Jets Jets. And lo and behold, our secured content is displayed. This is great. Everything works the way we want it to. Now, the last part of this that I want to show you is our little logout being. Um, we showed you the sorry the logout method. This is going to invalidate the session. All right, click the logout being. We're still here, but it's showing us our logout page. Okay, and just to show you that it actually works, I'm gonna try and hit that protected information again. Run the file, and once again, we're not allowed in. One more thing, well, I keep saying one more thing, but another thing I do wanna show you is that even though we are not logged in, we're still able to see things at the root area. So we're able to see our public page here. The only thing we cannot see is our protected page. That's exactly what you want. All right, fun time's over. Let's look at the libraries we're going to need to make this run. All right, here, let's go look at our libraries. Uh, I will include these in a summary or in a blog post or something so you're able to see what you need to have the actual application run, but real easy. I threw in Spring Framework 3.1 off of the Spring Source website, Spring Security 3.1. Both of these are my own custom libraries, but if you want to do that, you can actually just load up all the jar files. There's probably going to be about a dozen in each uh, framework folder when you download it. You're also going to need Commons Logging. This is an Apache jar. Okay. You're going to need the DBCP from Apache as well. It's also Commons. And then a commons pool. Last but not least, you need something called AOP Appliance or Alliance, whatever it is. Google it, you'll find it. Those are the jar files you're going to need to make this run. Well, that concludes our broadcast day. I hope that you enjoyed this tutorial. I'd love to see your comments. Also, if you have any questions, leave them in, in the comments section. And once again, uh, check. I'm going to put up a blog post for you guys to actually see the source code and hopefully get this working on your own. Really easy. This wasn't meant to be a in-depth tutorial or example. I just wanted to show you how quickly and easily you could set up Spring 3 to work with JSF. And I hope you can enjoy the rest of your day. I know I am. It's Sunday. It's gorgeous out. And I am out of here.